How many of you expect the sun to rise and fall each day? How many of you expect here in Las Vegas in August, you'll be making a mad dash to your car, flinging up in the door, and cranking the AC? <laughs> and how many of you expect a lot of yourself? And are you allowing those self-expectations to run your life? All right. I've got a really, really, really good question for you now. <laughs> Who in here loves to give or receive flowers? My kind of people, I don't see some of the men raising their hands, though. <laughs> kind of upsets me. <laughs> awesome. I also love flowers so much that I buy myself flowers each and every week. A couple of months ago, I had a bouquet of flowers about ready to toss it out when I stopped, and there was a little bundle of lavender daisy mums still living. So I cut them off and put them in a little vase and set it in my bathroom. The next morning, I woke up and couldn't believe what was living on my lavender daisy mums? A tiny little caterpillar, bright green. I went about my morning getting ready, and before I left, I stopped. And I thought, oh my god, I wouldn't want to live in the bathroom. My caterpillar probably doesn't want to live in the bathroom either. <laughs> so I moved the vase from the bathroom to the kitchen. That night, I got home, and the caterpillar was gone. The next morning, I woke up, was getting ready, about ready to step into the shower. I looked down, and holy crap, there's my caterpillar. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. This caterpillar had taken what I thought would be a three-year caterpillar journey, <laughs> and it had done it in less than 24 hours. Apparently, I was living with a super caterpillar. Now, this caterpillar lived with me for almost two weeks, and I noticed it, it was starting to transform. It was no longer the size of my pinky fingernail. It was now the size of my entire pinky. And it wasn't bright green. It was turning brown. At about the two-week mark, I came home, and my caterpillar had taken another journey. Now, when I look back at this, I think how awesome that I potentially could have had a, cat a butterfly flying around my apartment. But what's even more amazing is when I think about the expectations that that caterpillar had to release to begin the transformation to becoming a beautiful butterfly that it knew it was put on this earth to become. I don't know about you, but when I look at caterpillar, I don't expect a butterfly. Now, unlike the caterpillar, I lived in the land of expectations. I thought if I were to become a beautiful butterfly soaring successfully in life, I was going to have to meet every single person's expectations of me in order to earn my wings. When I was a kid, I was one of those star students involved in band and choir and dance and student body leadership, and I even took private piano lessons. So you can imagine when I came home one day, report card in hand, tears streaming down my face because I got a B in art. I was devastated. I was expected to be a star student. And I expected that of myself. Later on in life, expectations showed up in other ways. It would be a phone call from a girlfriend. Hey, Jess, do you want to go to this really awesome event? Please, 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 please. And it didn't matter if it was one of those nights where I just wanted to hang out on my couch with my two dogs, or if I had other plans, I would drop everything. I was expected to be a phenomenal friend. Or expectations would show up in the workplace. It would be, it didn't matter. If it was one of those mornings where I rolled out of bed, stubbed my toe, and drove to work, spilled coffee on myself, and I got a call from my mom that my baby's mama's dog's sister's dad's friend died. If somebody sat down at my desk, I would just smile. I was expected to be Pollyanna. And yes, I've been called that. Now, what I'm not suggesting is that all expectations hold us back from becoming that beautiful butterfly that we're all destined to be. I hope, like me, you take every opportunity every single morning to shout, I expect today is going to be a freaking amazing day. <laughs> 
What I am suggesting is that each and every one of you look deep down inside and determine what expectations are not serving you. What expectations are you holding on to that if unmet will leave you feeling like a failure and unworthy of love? All right, so you might be thinking, whoa, Jess, <laughs> you're going really deep on me. But I want to invite you in this moment, whatever emotions are coming up, it's okay. You might be like me and be able to recognize all of these self-expectations that you're trying to live up to that are not your own. Or you might be thinking, what the heck is all this conversation about self-expectation? And either way, it's all right. Like the butterfly, we're fragile. And expectations are like this big tropical thunderstorm. And I don't know about you, but I have never seen a butterfly fly through a tropical thunderstorm. It's impossible. <laughs> but you know what kind of mist a butterfly can fly through? A fine one. As I started to really learn about myself and discover that I had all these expectations that really weren't mine, that I was not choosing, I learned to identify a few things about expectations that were really key to me beginning my transformation. And I want to share three of them with you. Number one, adore your self-expectations. We get messages all day, every day, from society, the media, family, friends, lovers, right? And what happens is that oftentimes those external expectations of us become our own self-adopted expectations. We start to believe that's how we should be. So don't just love your expectations. Really adore them and choose them because they determine how you show up in this world. Number two, allow your self-expectations to transform. Some days I feel like I go through multiple transformations. Is anybody with me? <laughs> so I really screwed myself. I set the bar here on my self-expectations, and I didn't allow it to waver on any occasion when maybe I didn't feel like living up to that expectation. So let yourself transform your self-expectations on a daily basis as you feel needed. Number three. We all have a unique individual self-expectation thumbprint. Very unique to us. And a lot of times, we think that the good self-expectations that we feel, you know, I'm really rocking these self-expectations, should be thumbprinted all over everybody else. <laughs> I have a story to share about this one. When I was in college, I met a family member for the first time. We all got together for the day after Thanksgiving meal, you know, the one where you gather at the table, bring in all the leftovers, and have a big smorgasbord. And I was really loving my new family member for the first time meeting her. She was really joyful and fun and happy, just one of those women that you want to be around all the time. Until she started talking about those people. See, what my family member didn't know about me is that I grew up south of Seattle in a really diverse area, and most of my best friends were of a different culture or nationality or race other than my own. I fell in love with diversity. So when my family member was referring to those people, those people, it was like a knife in my heart every single time. I was containing myself clenching my fists underneath the table until she said, well, it's not like I'm prejudiced or anything. And I lost it. <laughs> I said, really? A few minutes after that, I ran out into the car and was just bawling. See, I expected my own flesh and blood, my own family member, to have the same self-expectation of speaking with love about different cultures as I did. 
And when I learned that this wasn't the case, it literally felt like my body was in shambles. But the beauty came when I was able to release that and let myself know my self-expectation is good enough. When the caterpillar begins to transform, its entire body turns to mush, with the exception of a few legs. Like the caterpillar, I had to go through physical transformation to release the mental expectations that I was holding on to in my life. For years, I had extreme stomach pains. They would leave me on the floor, crumpled up into a ball, feeling like a thousand rubber bands were wrapped around my stomach, and the pain would be so bad sometimes that I would usually throw up. And if it didn't last for two days, it was a few hours, but either way, it was intense pain. And what I didn't know at the time, I thought it was from food, is that really it was my own self-expectations that I was holding inside as I was striving to try to live up to everybody else's expectations. I was physically manifesting the pain of struggle in my own body. Through the years, I've developed several me time practices, is what I call them. They're daily, if not minutely, <laughs> activities that kick in every time I feel like that land of expectation is calling me back to their colony. One of my favorite me time practices is running a hot bath, lighting some candles, and pouring myself a tall glass of water. Scratch that, wine. <laughs> totally wine. I was taking one of these baths while I was preparing what I wanted to share with you, and I had an epiphany. I started bawling. I realized I was creating my own cocoon. The bath water was my bag of silk, protecting me from all worldly expectations. I was free to just be. All right, I got a confession to make right now. I've been holding some information back from you. See, those flowers that my caterpillar lived on were not part of my own weekly purchase. They were given to me by somebody who I love dearly. And just a few days after he gave me those flowers, he decided to take his own journey. Three years ago, that same man held me in a dark room, lit with candles, and rocked me back and forth. And he said to me, cocoon, turn into a butterfly cocoon, turn into a butterfly, cocoon, turn into a butterfly. Life is full of expectations, but the beauty and the magic happen when we're able to stand true in our power for the expectations that we really want to show up in in this lifetime. See, what I'm really clear on is that each and every one of you has a unique journey to becoming a beautiful butterfly, and it's your own. No one can tell you when it's your time to cocoon, and no one can tell you when it's your time to fly. <laughs>